Hello, uh, my name is Nico. I work at Gridspace, which is a company that makes bots using artificial intelligence. Today I'm going to talk about an interview question that we ask to graduating computer scientists from really good schools and who 99% of the time get it wrong. The question is, describe stochastic gradient descent to a five-year-old. And the answer that we get 99% of the time is basically, well, if you imagine grassy, hilly field and you drop a ball on it and the ball rolls to the lowest point in the field, that's stochastic gradient descent, which is okay. But the problem with this analogy is that I have a hard time just visualizing, okay, what is the ball in this scenario? What does the field represent? How does this relate to a neural network? And uh, when you press people on this, they often can't give an answer. I am going to try to give a more thorough explanation for a non-technical person. Uh, and we'll see if you're able to follow along or if I do a bad job at my own interview question. The name stochastic gradient descent, if we parse it out, stochastic means random, gradient means slope roughly, and descent means go down. So we're randomly going down a slope. But this is sort of meaningless without contextualizing what does the slope represent? Why are we going down? Why is down good? To start with, we need to understand what a function is. We have another video which describes what a function is, but roughly a function is something that maps every element from one set, which we call domain, onto an element of another set, which we call the range. And in particular, the set of functions that we are typically interested in for neural networks and computer science generally um, maps numbers onto other numbers. Our goal when training a neural network is to find a function that has useful properties for some real world task. So depending on what type of neural network you're um, trying to train, the input set might be the set of all pictures and your output may be just two elements. Is this a cat or is this not a cat? Now, because we're using computers and computers are very uh, number centric, we take the pictures and we turn them into numbers before we do anything else. And so this is commonly done you know, in, in image recognition as finding the brightness of every pixel and representing that as a number between zero and one. If you're using words, you can encode the words as numbers by just giving every different word a, uh, a different number. Now, the way a neural net works is there are a bunch of free parameters. And, and I have a separate video where I explain in detail what a neural network is. But the idea is that you take these input numbers, whether they represent a picture or something, and you multiply them by a bunch of other numbers and kind of just mix up the data enough and then you get out another set of numbers, right? And the numbers that you multiply your input by are called free parameters. And you don't know what these numbers should be in order to get the best result of your neural network. And so this sort of introduces a second function and it's an important distinction to remember that the neural network itself at inference time when we're trying to run it is a function. But when we're training it, we are using a second function, which is called our loss function. And that function as input takes in our own neural net or more specifically, it takes in all of the free parameters of our neural net that we are trying to find the correct values of. And it's an important distinction to remember that the neural network itself at inference time when we're trying to run it is a function. But when we're training it, we're using a second function, which is called our loss function. And that function as input takes in our own neural net, or more specifically, it takes in all of the free parameters of our neural net that we are trying to find the correct values of. And as output, it gives some measure of how good that neural net is at doing its task. There's many different types of loss functions, but a normal one to do is just to take the difference, the average difference between what your neural net said 
the output should be and what a person said the output should be. Mm -hmm. And that's your loss or how bad your neural network is. And so the farther away it is from what your training data says that the output should be, the worse your error is. So now, how do we find the best neural network? And so going back to functions, a common thing that you might ask of a function is what input value in my domain gives me the lowest possible output out of all the possible things that I could put into the input, even an infinite set. So what we're trying to do is basically find that value. And a technique for finding it is the cast of gradient descent. And the way I like to imagine this process, rather than a field with a ball rolling down it or something, is imagine you have a really old crappy TV and it's got a bunch of knobs on it that are unlabeled. If you're my age, you might remember owning such a TV. And so the signal coming into your TV in this case represents your input. So that's, you know, whatever it could be the, the pictures or something. Um, it could be words. And the picture on the screen that you're seeing is your output. And when you just turn on the TV, it's just noise and snow. And what your goal is, is to turn the knobs so that the picture looks good and you can watch TV. And so a procedure that you might invent to try and find the right setting for all the knobs is go through each knob one at a time and just wiggle it back and forth a little bit. If it gets more or less clear as you wiggle it, and by how much. If it gets a little more clear when you move it to the right, you move it a little to the right and then you stop. If it gets clearer really fast as you move it to the right, maybe you move it a little faster. In this case, the knobs represent the free parameters on your neural network, and the quality of the output of the screen represents your loss function. And so little bit by little bit, you repeat this until you get to a setting where any movement of the knobs at all makes the picture worse. And then you're done. Those are your parameters for your neural network. So, so the reason I don't like the Hills analogy is because it's sort of abstract, right? In, in this analogy, <laughs> the north, south, and east, west dim spatial dimensions are uh, an abstract vector space they represent kind of the parameters of your neural network and the height of the hill is your loss function and the ball doesn't really represent anything <laughs> but except the notion that going down the hill is more of the loss. So I think the TV analogy is, is maybe a little bit more direct of a representation of what you're doing. The last question is why is it stochastic? Like what, it, what is random about this process? Mm -hmm. And the reason it's stochastic is because the function that we are trying to use to train our model, the loss function, it's a hypothetical function. It doesn't really exist or it does, but it is defined over the set of all possible inputs to our neural net, which is a infinite set. And so when we try to measure whether moving this knob is, is getting better or worse, we can't tell if that's really making the true loss function better or worse because that is, an, is defined over an infinite number of things. And so, you know, you could think of it as equivalent to, did my moving the knob make the picture better for all TV broadcasts over all channels for all time? Or is it just better for this moment, for this one station that I'm tuned into? And so the stochastic part is we approximate this loss function by choosing randomly some set of data points that basically give us how good is the neural network at this random set of data points, right? And these data points are drawn randomly from our set of labeled examples for inputs and outputs for that particular uh, neural network. Yeah, in summary, if you were wondering how to identify cats in photographs, the answer is math. Thank you for watching my explanation. I hope that helped you get an intuition for stochastic gradient descent. If there's other terms that you want us to define, please put them in the comments. 
and thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Now I have to get back to this.